Hello students. Today we will see the next topic that is kinematics of rigid bodies. We have already seen what is kinematics of particles. Kinematics means what? Kinematics is something wherein we don't consider the force or the mass of the body. It is just the relationship that we study of distance, velocity, acceleration with respect to time. So in kinematics of rigid bodies, we will be doing almost the same thing. But now what happens is for particles, we didn't consider the dimension of the body. But in rigid bodies, we will consider the dimension as well. So that is what is this introduction was for kinematics of rigid bodies. Okay, students, we will see what is kinematics of rigid bodies now. As I have said, we will study kinematics of rigid bodies. Now we know that kinematics is something where it, we don't consider the force or the mass of the body. And rigid bodies as compared to particles, it means what? In particles, we didn't consider the dimension of the body. In this, we will consider the dimension of the body as well. Now, there are a few things we need to understand in kinematics of rigid bodies. The translation motion, the rotational motion, and the general plane motion. Now, what is translation motion? Translation motion means, suppose I have a body like this, and I'll consider a line on the body. Now, this body is going to move along a straight line that is rectilinear translation motion and in that case this line when it moves from position a to position b the orientation of the line is not going to change so for example i'll just show you the same body i have drawn at some distance say this is position a and this is position b this line was vertical over here and it will remain vertical. So that means what? All the points on this line, when they travel from A to B, their position doesn't change along this length. So if I have a point over here, it will be straight and it will go to its next position without any change. So that is rectilinear translation motion so i'll just write over here next part in translation motion this is rectilinear translation motion the next will be curvilinear translation motion in which the orientation of the line is not changing but the body moves along a curved Now in this you can see that this body has traveled from A to B. But what is happening over here? The body is traveling along a curved path and in that case this AB is still remaining vertical from A to B. So that is a pure translation motion. That means you are moving from A to B but the body is not going under any kind of rotation. Rotation as in this orientation of this line will change. So that is under the next topic which comes as rotational motion. Now rotational motion is in this case we have the body fixed about one point and it is rotating. And the body keeps on rotating in such a way that there is no translation motion. So if I just show you one figure. Suppose I have this rod AB. This rod AB is hinged at A. Now what is happening is this rod AB is moving 
in this plane that is the xy plane that i'm having and it is the axis of the rod is the rotation of the axis of this rod is perpendicular to this plane so this rod is going under rotational motion with respect to this point that is a point so this is pure rotation in which case in this case there is no translation motion at all of this rod ab now what is general plane motion general plane motion is a combination of rotational motion as well as the translational motion now in that case the body rotates as well as it translates its position from position a to position b so this is what we have in the introduction part now the next thing is we have studied the few formulas in kinematics of particles for translation motion under constant acceleration now what were those formulas now in this case we have studied all these three formulas wherein the acceleration was constant and we can find out the various parameters that were required now this is for translation motion what if i go for a rotational motion of the object now in rotational motion we need to understand few things the notations are going to change now in this case we have velocity in rotational motion it is angular velocity and angular velocity we denote it by omega now omega we have over here as the final velocity whereas here we have u for translational motion in rotational motion we'll denote it with omega not that would be the initial angular velocity in this case we have acceleration as a now we will be having alpha for rotational motion now what about t do we consider time yes because this is kinematics and we consider every parameter that is the velocity displacement and the acceleration with respect to time so this was the first formula that we had then in the translation motion we have s for displacement in this case in rotational motion the displacement is in terms of theta so i'll write theta is equal to u we have already denoted in rotational motion with omega not so i won't change that i'll keep it omega not time remains same so that will be there plus half acceleration ch changes to alpha so we have alpha over here and t square okay then the next formula is v square equal to u square plus 2as that is in translation motion in rotation it will become omega square equal to omega not square plus twice of acceleration product of acceleration and the displacement that is theta so this is how we do now we have already studied few formulas like what is velocity in terms of uh, i mean the relation between the translation motion and the acceleration uh, rotational motion for velocity we denote it with v equal to r omega now this is the formula that we are going to use extensively in this chapter for the general plane motion now i will show you few examples how to go about that after the formulas that we have seen before taking any example i would like to continue with the introduction part for icr that is instantaneous center of rotation
for example i have this ladder resting against resting against this wall and the ground now suppose just in case if this ladder is moving towards right with some constant velocity say v i would call this points at as a and b so this velocity will be vb so now this ladder is moving towards right with constant velocity of vb so at the same time what is going to happen is the velocity at this point will be going down and i'll call this as va now i need to find out the instantaneous center what happens with this instantaneous center of rotation now this ladder is rotating with some center and that center is changing for every instance like at this position the center would be something the moment the ladder moves to the next position the center changes like now how do i get that for example this vb is going in this direction and va is going in this direction i'll draw a perpendicular and try to make those perpendiculars meet at some point so what is going to happen now this is going vertically down and this is going horizontally towards right so if i drop a perpendicular from here in this direction and from here towards right so they will meet at this point and i'll i can i can call this point as i which is the instantaneous center of rotation now as this ladder moves that means this point will come at this instant somewhere over here for example i'll just take the new position so for this new position if you see this velocity is still going down and this velocity is still going towards right now if i drop a perpendicular from both the end points they would meet at a new this new position and this will be my new i this is my i1 and this happens to be my i2 so that means what at every instance i'm getting a new center and that is why we call it as instantaneous center of rotation now what we have got is i1 i2 this rod ab is going to have some angular velocity at this position now that angular velocity is going to act in this direction i'll call it as omega ab similarly over here also it is going in this direction so i'll call it as omega ab so what i'll do is i'll take an example of the similar pattern and then we'll see how to find out the angular velocities and the velocities of this type of a system now you can read this question that it states that a ladder of 6 meter is resting against a vertical wall at a at horizontal ground at b if the end b is pulled towards right with a constant velocity of 4 meter per second that means the ladder is slipping towards right with this constant velocity so i need to find out the icr of the ladder that is the instantaneous center of rotation angular velocity of the ladder at the instant that is omega for the ladder the velocity of end a that is va i have to find out so what i'll do is i'll first draw the fbd and in that i will try to find out the icr of this system so this is the question that is given to me i know the length is 6 meters the angle with the ground is 30 degrees so this angle happens to be 60 degrees now what i have done over here i have the ladder resting against the wall at this point a and resting against the ground at this point b the angle of the ladder with the ground is 30 degrees vb is going that is the velocity of this point is going towards right with that is 4 meter per second the constant velocity that we have and i can make out that 
this point that is this ladder this end of the ladder is going to go down so the velocity at this end will be going down so what i have done is i have just dropped a perpendicular from each velocity points and they meet at this instant over here i will call this as i that is my instantaneous center of rotation and with respect to this i this rod ab is having an angular velocity of omega ab now what i need to do is i need to find out the angular velocity of the rod ab and this velocity as well the velocity at a i have found the instantaneous center of rotation i have got as this the length of the rod happens to be or the ladder happens to be 6 meters so i can find out this distance ib and ia this angle would be 60 degree and this angle would be 30 degree so i'll get this as 90 i know that this length is 6 meters So I have got the length for IA as 5.196 meters and IB as 3 meters. Now, we have seen the relation V equal to R omega. Now using this relation, I can find out the required velocity and the angular velocity. See, I have written the formula as VB is R omega AB. So that means what? This VB is the velocity at this point going towards right. This length IB happens to be the radial distance for this rod AB with respect to this center I. I can find out omega AB because I know this length IB and the velocity at point B. Now, this is angular velocity. So, angular velocity, the unit happens to be radians per second. I have got the angular velocity as one point three three radians per second. Now, I need to find out the velocity at A. So I can do the same formula VA equal to R omega AB. R may be this distance IA. So I have got the velocity for A as 6.928 meter per second. So as per the given question, I have located the ICR for the ladder and that happens to be over here. Then the question had angular velocity of the ladder at the given instant and velocity of point A that is over here. The velocity of the ladder happens to be angular velocity of the ladder is 1.33 meter per radian per second and velocity at A is 6.928 meter per second. So I hope that you have understood this simple example in kinematics of rigid bodies for general plane motion. Thank you.